How's it going everybody? Just wanted to take you on a tour of my uh, CNC router table here. The Omeo CNC router table. Wanted to talk about the box first. I've made it with a soundproof uh, insulation from a Canadian company called Sonopan. I'm not sure if you American guys can get this, but Sonopan's pretty incredible. I'll show you it here in a second. The box is made of MDF and hardboard. I used hardboard in some spots just to keep it thin. And I used MDF of 3 8 and half inch. Um, you know, the doors are 3 8 the bottom's pretty thick. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's pretty overbuilt and it's been moved a bunch of times so starting to get a little beat down but anyway the two doors there some latches to keep the doors shut it's pretty basic it was really just to keep the sound down I'll show you the Sonopan so Sonopan is this really dense insulation it's about an inch thick um, it's dimpled it's got like a wool feeling to it you know it's similar to that rock sole insulation but it is incredible stuff I actually came across it at a trade show a tumbler was inside of a box and I could not hear the tumbler outside of the box so that was pretty incredible so I hunted it down found it out of Rona bought about six sheets of it got it cut up and I've been putting it in things to keep things quiet. So it's pretty good. Anyway, that's the Sonopan stuff. Uh, it's made in Quebec, Canada, actually. So it's a pretty neat company. I'm surprised I came across some of it at Arona. I was very happy and I bought up a bunch of it. The guy that worked there was confused because it was on the top shelf and he doesn't have to take it down very often. So. I guess people don't know what it is, but it's pretty awesome, so. Next to the router table, I've got this little Asus 12 inch computer. Nothing special, it's just a little netbook, runs Windows 10. I have Mach 3 on there. Mach 3 came with the Omeo and CNC. So I installed it on there. Behind the computer is the driver box from Omeo CNC. If you can see it there, but it has the VFD inside which drives the spindle. Uh, power switch on the right hand side, it'll show the frequency for the VFD. Camera's having trouble focusing here, it's a little bit low light underneath here. But yes, so an emergency stop, VFD and power switch for both. The box isn't terribly loud. It's got some pretty big fans in there. Um, so, so far so good. Um, the driver box actually had a bit of an issue. My only gripe so far with the, the unit, the whole mill itself. So here's the driver board that it came with and it fried in about a month of owning it just would not work anymore so I bought a new driver board that works uh, via USB and works with mock and so I wired it up took apart this guy put the new driver in there Sorry, put the new driver board in there and then, you know, it's kind of nice because I have access to the drivers for that unit. Um, so it's not like it's, you know, it's overseas and I can't get the driver anymore. So it's kind of nice. I know what's in there now and it works well. It runs everything perfect. 
yeah, that was the only issue that I had. So yeah, we got the computer running Mach 3. We got this little dongle here. Now this guy here, it actually runs, well, it allows you to run the mill using this UCNC controller. Um, it's just a little handheld unit. You can buy these on AliExpress or Banggood. Um, they work with most CNC controllers or mock. You need the USB that it comes with and then you can do all sorts of things with this. Um, set your spindle speed, home it, uh, move axes around to zero things. You can zero all axes with it. You can use it for um, tool probe. Um, you know, doing tending, setting, you can use it for setting your tool height. Uh, yeah, so kind of a neat little unit. And so if I take this here, so I can show you what this little unit does here. You can just jog the mill with it. You know, we'll go X negative. So that gives you an idea. Yes, you can move things around, you can zero things. Pretty good. So far, so good. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a little tour of this because I am gearing up to make a part in the next video for a techno buggy using that chunk of brass right there. So yeah, stay tuned. Just a quick little run over of Anybody that's interested in CNC. Oh uh, yeah, I should show you what ball screws look like. One second here, I'll pull one out. Kinda neat. I this is not my only CNC unit, so I am I am converting another uh, CNC mill, the tag mini mill. It's actually just down here in pieces. But yeah, there's some ball screws that are going on that. Um, People usually don't convert their own stuff to ball screws. I'm kind of taking it on as a challenge. You can buy the tag mill with the ball screws, but I've been doing a long-term project trying to <laughs> convert it myself. And uh, yeah, it's it's a mess down there. But yeah, it's so far I've got the X and Y, uh, it's X and Z axis done. Uh, I just need to finish the Y. Or maybe it's Y and Z I have done. I have to finish the X. It's been a while, but anyway, yeah. I'm running this thing until this thing is done. And down there we've got the, the mighty Sherline. So mini machine tools. You can still make some pretty rad stuff with them. Here's a ball screw. This one's been milled and surface ground. I know people who know about these things are probably like, what are you doing to that? It's hardened steel and I was cutting it on a big mill to fit it into the little mill. Um, so yeah, some blue dye there. See how I can turn, so I can just turn this. So inside this nut is ball bearings. And these threads are essentially bearing races see that so the balls ride in the races and they also ride in a race inside the nut so if you think about that there when it travels along an axis there's essentially no backlash so you can turn you, know, you can turn the machine you can turn the screw sorry you can turn the screw and tell the machine to go to a certain location over and over and there will be very little backlash. I mean, there's always backlash in everything on a microscopic level. But yeah, these are just inexpensive Chinese ball screws and there's a guy on eBay. There's a lot of guys on eBay that will make them to length for any project. And yeah, so pretty important to have these in precision equipment. Um, if you are buying a, you know, a 
3D printer that's resin based or 3D printer in general or you're buying any CNC machine, if it says it has ball screws and you're paying a wee bit of a premium, there's a reason why it's going to be a lot more accurate. Just know that. So yeah, ball screws, pretty cool. Um, anybody that's into linear motion will know these and yes, they are one of the more accurate ways to, to keep things repeatable. So about the mill, router, whatever you want to call it, it's a router table. It's about 12 by 14 work surface. It's a little bit inside of that because you know, you have work fixtures, so you have to mount them and if you see the spindle actually can only go so far left and right, fore and aft. So whenever they spec something and say you have a 12 by 14 or what have you work surface, it's always a little under that. Anyway, the spindle will run at 25,000 RPMs. It does have ball screws on every axis. You can kind of see one tucked in there behind the spindle. 25,000 RPM spindle, big hefty stepper motors, not super big, but they're big enough. It's got some jog wheels on it too, so I can actually move the Z. I can move all axes actually. It's got a way to move them all. It's made with extruded aluminum on the top, front, it runs on, I can't see it under there, but it has linear ways, ball bearing linear ways. So, pretty awesome. Ball bearing linear ways, ball screws, limit switches on every axis. So it will trigger the limits. So far so good, I'm pretty surprised. Um, I've been able to cut metal with some light cuts, no problem. I've cut stainless on it, probably shouldn't, but yeah, I've managed to do really light cuts on 304 stainless. I did it as a test with a little two mil end mill, two millimeter end mill. So yeah, um, on there right now, it's just a inexpensive tag, low pro vice with a tag fixture plate. And then this chunk of wood here is from cutting leather. You can see patterns from cutting out some leather. So yeah, I'm gonna get some new fixture plates for it um, and probably some Sonder Machine Works um, low pro vices. Uh, those, those things are awesome. NYCNC.com, Sonder's Machine Works. You probably know them if you're into CNC on YouTube. Um, yeah, so definitely a big inspiration. And so yeah, this, just so everybody knows, this is just a small hobby mill. You know, I've run fifth axis and full size CNC machines as a machinist. And uh, yeah, Haas and you know, a bunch of the big names. Yes, this is just a hobby mill. It's not meant to do anything crazy. I can still make parts with it. It still does a job quite well. So no complaints there. CNC machines are fun. Anyway, that is the Omeo CNC. This is the X4800, omeocnc.com. They were okay to deal with. I had a bit of an issue with the some of their code they give you um, but they sent me um, a correction for it so it was all good um, but yeah once you learn about these things you can kind of hack into them and they're all kind of the same the reason I bought this one linear linear rails with bearings and ball screws on every axis the driver box it came with Mach 3 so pretty good I've used quite a bit of CNC control software and Mach 3 is kind of like your your hobbyist DIY I mean some sign shops use it it's good it works it's got everything on there that you need 
Um, once you understand uh, CNC software and CNC driver software, they're kind of all the same. Well, not really, but <laughs> but yeah, they're um, a wee bit of a learning curve in the beginning, and then you kind of get it. So anyway, that's everything there. It's the mighty router table. More projects to come. Cut something out soon out of brass for a techno buggy. Make a rear brass weight. So stay tuned for that. And see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.